Good afternoon guys and gals, ladies and gents. This is North Shore Preparedness coming to you from the absolutely beautiful shores of Lake Ontario. Today is Monday, May the 17th, 2021. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here, just beautiful. Uh, we're running a temperature currently of uh, about 21 degrees Celsius or 71 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for our American brothers and sisters. Like, just look at how blue those skies are. I actually noticed that the moon was up. Maybe I, maybe I can zoom in on that. See if you guys can catch that, if my hands are steady enough. Oh, there we are. You can just see it in the middle of the screen there. Probably won't focus on it, but that's all right. Just back off of that and... Uh... Yeah, so such a beautiful day. I thought I'd better get my butt out into the garden. Um, and get some stuff done so let's just take a walk around and and see what was going on all right share you the little update on the uh experimental urban garden okay so like i said i was gonna do over here let's see if that's uh focused properly over here on this bed over here got this all cleaned out and turned up finished doing that this morning and then this bed over here, I got it all cleaned out, took down all the lattice work, got the weeds out of it, got it all worked up too. So that was nice. This lattice work here that I left in place, well, it's kind of, it kind of belongs to uh, this wisteria plant here right now. So I think that's where it's going to stay. I may have to uh, chop it out in pieces if I want it to uh, disappear, but... Um, we'll jump off that bridge when we come to it. And of course, this bed over here, I still haven't got to that yet. But that, that's all right. That's a, an hour's work, maybe. Oh, there's a little corner over here I didn't get to just yet. There's 10 minutes worth of work. Clean that uh, little area up, and then that whole bed there is going to be good to go. Now, I did uh, speak with a young lady upstairs. And uh, she said, uh, expressed some interest in maybe putting some uh, things in the ground back here. Now I noticed she bought some pots and whatnot, but things definitely do better in the ground. Uh, so she's got that one tomato plant over there. I think I'm gonna offer her that spot right there because that's probably the best spot in the garden for it. Tomatoes went absolutely nuts over in this bed here last year. I don't know what I did right. Maybe soil amendment, um, lots of watering, uh, no food of course. Uh, but this uh, this area back here, I mean, you can see there there isn't a lick of shade. There isn't a, uh, even a little bit of shade back here. There's a massive uh, sunny microclimate back here. Like I said, it was 71 degrees, but back here it's 81 degrees type of deal. So uh, I think that really, really helps uh, quite a bit. Now, this bed over here, I had it mixed up last year. Uh, I tried putting uh, beans across the back, yellow beans. <clears throat> I tried radish across the front and then uh, uh, peppers and tomatoes in the middle. This year, this bed is doing, uh, is going to have nothing in it but peppers. You know, they need about, uh, oh, one foot on either side, and that's about a 15 foot bed or so. So I, uh, I'll put eight pepper plants in this bed here this year, which is more peppers than I can eat because I plan on dehydrating a bunch of them uh, just to put them back, uh, you know, They'll store for a very, very long time, dehydrated, just in a mason jar. Which is great, because, you know, that's vitamin C, right? So, um, so what I got up to besides that this morning, I finished out, uh, doing up these beds, and I thought, okay, better start getting to the potatoes. So, that's the tub I had last year. I had potatoes in. This one here I haven't done yet, but I did these other two containers of potatoes. Now, last year... I did my potatoes in these buckets here. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure if you can see how they got uh, holes drilled in the bottom of them there for drainage. Yeah, there you go. You can see that there. Holes in the bottom for drainage. So I grew them in that last year with mixed uh, mixed success. So I, uh, I thought maybe it was a space issue. So I decided to go with these uh, larger totes here this year. So we'll see what kind of success we have out of that. Now... Growing them in buckets to the potatoes there last year wasn't a complete uh, failure because these are some of the what's left over of uh, what I grew last year. Not sure if you can see that, but those are uh, this is what I'm using for seed potatoes. Okay, so like I ate off of my potatoes for uh, you know 
a good number of meals and this is what I had left over and they just uh, you know, sort of started to sprout out on me and I thought okay I got my seed potatoes so that's what I've been using I think last year like this pot right here I did have this one last year these other totes here I found them by the side of the road uh, last fall so I grabbed those up and you know I thought maybe I'll try it uh, try the potatoes and those this year but but this pot right here I did grow in last year but what I did was when I went uh, and took my seed potatoes last year I'd take a potato like this you see how it's got all those chits on there what I would do is I take a knife and like split that in half then I plant both these little halves you know what I mean and I think that might have been a mistake because in that pot right there I think I probably had 20 or 30 little chits in it uh, on little wee pieces of potato and I ended up with a couple of big potatoes but I ended up with uh, a bunch of whole bunch of little wee ones don't get me wrong the little wee ones are good for roasters or for salad or, or whichever but uh, I kind of want some bigger ones so what I've gone ahead and done is I've got in this tub over here three whole potatoes with about two chits on each potato same with this tote right here and this tub right here I've got only two potatoes in both of them uh, with uh, uh, two chits like one at sort of either end so we'll see if um, lack of crowding or this sort of uh, spacing helps them out that's kind of why I call this an experimental urban garden because this is an experiment I've never gardened in the city before and and the whole idea is to prove a point to people who are in the city so you can use totes or if you've got a little bit of dirt a little patch of dirt you can grow vegetables in it you can grow food in it right that's the whole point of it now um, oh my American brothers and sisters here's something uh, of curiosity to, uh, to you guys and gals maybe you know sometimes us Canadian folk on my channel we mention about bags of milk something blew in off the street and this is a milk bag this is what this is what milk comes in up here you, you buy a, a bag that's you know three times the size of that and three of those come inside of that now what you do is you, you knock off the corner of it and you, you drop that into a uh, it's called a milk jug plastic milk jug sort of oval shaped kind of like this uh, blood and bone meal so you drop it in there and you pour your milk out of that but yeah that's how we uh, buy milk up here in milk bags we do have cartons but if you're wondering what a milk bag is that's it right there personally I don't buy it I don't use a whole lot of milk unless I'm making a soup or whatever else and I don't need that much milk I don't do a whole bunch of dairy so anyways yeah I got to uh, potting my uh, potatoes up and uh, you know I did these three containers here and I came to doing this one it's like well I gotta run out I need a couple of things so I went out of the house, uh, got the things I needed, and while I was out there, I thought, well, you know, the garden center is just you know, the one that I like. There's a bunch of garden centers around, but the one that I like is more of a family-owned country type one. It was just right up the street, so I thought I'd go over there. And while I was in there, I got myself some peppers, okay? So I, I've started uh, potting those up. They were in little, uh, they were in these, um, let's see if the camera will focus on that. You see that, uh, this little, uh, cell pack or whatever it's called it came in that you know uh, four four peppers per each uh, cell pack so I got two of those right and I just <clears throat> excuse me been potting them up and just taking a break uh, to show you guys what I'm up to I, I want to show you the difference too about uh, how, how to buy stuff if you're buying your plants in if you can buy them in these cell packs that's the way to do it because I got both of these cell packs that's eight pepper plants um, for like five bucks so less than a dollar a plant if you can sprout them by yourself uh, you know by seed go ahead and do that I just don't have the space to do it so I uh, I tend to buy mine I buy seeds as well you know just to put back for my seed bank but uh, let me tell you about the difference in price okay so I got these peppers um, those two cells took them out to the car got back in the car I said well crap I wanted some chard too got back out of the car back into the greenhouse asked the young lady where is your chard at she pointed it out to me and it's like okay so I went over and I got three pots of it now these three pots of chard they were just a little over twelve dollars for those three pots okay 
you see the size difference in between those. These are the size of these pretty much, right? So I mean, if I bought my pepper plants in pots this size, it would have been three or four dollars a piece. Whereas if you get them in the cell packs, you know, it's a two forty-nine or something per cell pack. However, when I looked at these and I started counting the plants inside of it, you know, with the, between these three pots here, there's I've got a, a dozen charred plants here. So I think I made out all right. I'll spread those out and. Uh, so we're still looking at about a dollar a plant on these, but uh, I'm going to harvest, uh, well, I would say $200 worth of chard off of those, no problem this year. And again, I'll, I'll be dehydrating that and just uh, storing it in, um, in containers. But, uh, but yeah, there's the difference in price. If you can get these little cell packs, it's way, way more economical. You're looking at less than a dollar a plant, 75 cents maybe. Um, yeah, but because they're in these cell pots here, I just wanted to pot them up a bit, leave them in there for a week to uh, root out a little bit more before I put them in the uh, in the garden bed. But when I do, those eight pepper plants there, hopefully I don't uh, experience any attrition on them. You know, they all look pretty healthy. I uh, took my time and went through, but those eight pepper plants will occupy this entire bed. So we'll be uh, we'll be showing you what that looks like. Uh, over the summer as well but that's a and this this spot right down here I had my chard down in here last year and uh, it's gonna be all chard throughout uh, all that bed this year so that's what I'm up to guys and gals um, I hope everyone's doing well well and safe having a beautiful Monday afternoon if you're enjoying the weather I hope it's not too hot or too rainy I know it was raining real bad this morning on Southern Boy Prepper Hope those gardens don't get flooded out. Well, guys and gals, yeah, I will be live streaming tonight at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you'd like to join in with that, uh, it's, it's always a fun time or uh, educational or even entertaining. So th that's what I got going on here today, guys and gals. I thought I'd uh, just share with uh, you guys what I'm up to. I'm going to get these potted up, um, get everything watered in, those potatoes and, and these things here. And uh, I'll probably sit down in the cool shade and have a beer. Oh, wait. Guy's outside with his dog across the road there. Dog loves to chase a stick. I don't know if he's found the stick yet or not. Nice little rotty. Uh, looks like a rotty shepherd mix. Oh, yeah. He's got the stick. He's got the stick. With that, guys and gals, I'll leave you. Everyone stay well and safe. Hopefully we'll see you tonight for the live stream, okay? There's going to be no show preparedness. Out for now.